Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. So we've all seen it when somebody has either way too big or way too small gaps on either end of all the spindles. Well, today I'm gonna to teach you guys how to get perfectly even gaps between all the spindles and how to mathematically figure it out. So this is how I'm gonna do it and there may be other ways. Feel free to share it in the comments. But anyways, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the length. It is one ten and three quarters. So that's easy. And we're gonna have to convert this into fractions. So this is an easy one to start with. So that's one ten point seven five. Okay, so it's time to do a little bit of math. And there is actually a measurement that we're gonna be starting out with, and that's four inches. And the reason is it has to be four inches or smaller so that babies don't get their heads stuck in the spindles. So what I've got here is I've got inch and a half wide uprights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take four inches and inch and a half, combine them. So 5.5 inches, and then I'm going to divide 110, my overall length, 110.75 divided by 5.5. And that gives me 20.136. So 20. So that's what I'm going to start with here. So I've already got 20 spindles laid out right here. Now you don't wanna do the whole thing by math because you know what, math will fail you sometimes. So the best way to figure out exactly what the space in between is gonna be is to line up all of your spindles and now you're going to know exactly what this length is. And then next, you're gonna measure from your other posts, it's just over here. And what I have is I have 80 and three quarters. So we'll write that down, 80 and three quarters is my remainder after 20 posts. So the other thing you need to know is there's going to be 21 spaces. So there will always be one more space than the number of uprights. So now we're gonna take 80 and three quarters, so 80.75, and we're gonna divide that by 21 and find out what this space in between is gonna be. Perfect, so 80.75 divided by 21 equals 3.845 inches. Well, that's great, I've got a decimal, I can't use that yet. So let's figure this out. All right, 3.8452. So there's a way to figure out what that is. And if I remember correctly, what it is, is we wanna get this into sixteenths of an inch, something I can work with on a tape measure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 0 0.8452 and we're going to times that by 16. So now what we have is 13.5232. So that 13.5232, what that means is that we have 13 and a half sixteenths. That was the remainder from that decimal. So I now have three and 13.516. So what does that mean? I mean, that's a weird number. It just means I'm gonna do three and 13 sixteenths plus. So it's just a smidge in between those two sixteenth lines. The next thing I'm gonna do is go and cut myself a block at three and 13 50, six, God, these numbers, you guys. Three and 13 sixteenths plus. And just for you metric folks in everywhere outside of North America, I know it would be easier. I know that, you guys. We just don't do it here, because we're stubborn. But anyways, so should I take the leap of faith and just start installing all of these with my spacer block? And I better write down spacer so that I don't lose it. Well, I think for the sake of the video, at the very least, I'm actually gonna double check everything. This is a bit painstaking, and I almost just want to trust my math and go for it, but we better double check. There is also a possibility of error just doing this. I could be increasing it by like a 32nd of an inch every pencil line too. Also, the way I'm assembling this, I actually need the lines here, so it's not gonna to be total wasted effort.
What's gonna happen? Oh, quarter inch, you guys. Quarter inch. But guess what? Oh, it's close enough to four inches that we could fudge the last ones. I actually consider that pretty good. And now knowing that, I can actually go with this layout and I can start to fudge them in like the last four or five if it looks like it's not going to make sense. So it's not bad in my opinion. Either way, we have under four inches and it's very close to the original measurement. So it's not going to be picked up by eye. So instead of getting worked up and going back to the drawing board for my measurements, what I did was, you know, I started with the spacer block one, as in going with my lines that I made. And then what I eventually did, as I got to the very end, I knew that I needed to move them over a little bit. So by the time I got to this one, I just took it off my line just a hair, an eighth of an inch, eighth of an inch, eighth of an inch. And then I knew I needed a little bit more, so by this one I get to a quarter. So it's a little bit bigger than the spacer block, but not perceptibly. And then by the time I get to the very end, so there again it fits, and we are, you know, within a sixteenth of an inch. So it's looking really good. So next I've gotten my top piece cut to fit, and it fits nicely in here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this down here and just place it in between these two posts. And I can now mark every one of these exactly where they go, like a perfect template. This way I know that it's going to go in exactly the right spot and we're not going to get any incremental error over the way, especially because I went off my layout a tiny bit. So this way, I know it's gonna be perfect. This wood is so nice, you guys. Clear fir, clear hemlock. It's actually a shame it's getting painted, but oh well. It's just what I had to use to be able to make a nice product. So at least we know underneath the paint, it's gonna be some nice, beautiful wood and not all this lame particle board and MDF that everything is these days. You know, when I disassemble old houses, I love it because that's what it always is. It's all this beautiful fur and hemlock because that's what we had so much of in Vancouver a hundred years ago. It's what they built everything out of. Just make sure you label it somehow. So I can do like a, I've got a two right there. I'm gonna put a two right here where it's gonna go. One, one. That way I'm not gonna flip it around by accident somehow and end up installing this backwards and having everything look askew. Now that I've got the underside of this laid out, I'm gonna screw them in. And I wanna know, what would you guys do in this case? So even though this is paint grade, and I could technically screw straight down from here, I kinda don't wanna do that on this top surface. It's so perfect and beautiful. And I'm worried that those screws could show over time, you know, like on a door jam. So I'm actually gonna toe screw all of these in. And no, I'm not gonna use brad nails or anything like that because you know what? I just don't trust that. I want this to be able to take like the full impact of a person and not all crumble in. So it screws the whole way. 
and now I'm gonna have to toe screw from both sides and I'm gonna have to fill every single side when I could do half as many screws and a direct connection but I just want to keep the top face of this looking as nice and smooth as possible. That's going to be a lot of work, but I think it'll be worth it. Okay, I'm not filming this, you guys. You know what it looks like, you saw one. The railing is done. All the spaces are looking pretty good. This side, I did the same math and the space wound up to be three and five eighths. So if I remember correctly, it was three and 13 sixteenths on this side, three and five eighths on this side, which is a three sixteenths difference for the spaces, so not perceptible to the eye. So that's one method for calculating your spindles. I don't know any other ones, that's why I didn't show you them. And if I'm sitting here filming, that means I forgot to close out the video when I was on site. So here I am, and video's over, guys. That's it, I hope you found it useful. Let me know your methods for doing things. Um, thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. That's all I have to say about spindles. And you know, you can use that method for any upright. So anytime you need spaces, even. I know they were only mostly even, but you can't tell. Nine times out of 10, construction is about creating the illusion of perfection as opposed to true perfection, which really can't be created by humans. It is not for us to do. Anyways, we are wandering I'm wandering. Thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. Till the next video.